Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name and we thank you and praise you for your grace that you have given us. Lord, we ask and seek your face today that you will anoint this message and that you will open the hearts and minds of them that are listening, that they will seek you, O God, and get to see your face in a new way. Thank you, O precious God, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit that we, your children, are able to bring forth your word and preach the gospel to the nations. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, O God, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Today I want to speak to you on the creation of God, his most greatest creation, which is mankind. When God created the heavens and the earth, he created a magnificent being called man. And I want to read to you out of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. It says, God said, let us make man in our own image. So God created man in his own in image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them and then God blessed them. So we see that God created the heavens and the earth by just speaking out and the heavens and the earth were formed just by the power of his word and his voice. But when it came to creating man, he performed something far more personal than just saying a word and man began, became a being. I want to read to you out of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. It says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. How incredible that is. God took time out to lovingly create with his own hands a human being because that was his reason for creating the heavens and the earth in the first place so that he would have a place to put mankind and there we would be able to serve God throughout our time here on earth however God's timetable was. And the, the reason God created man in that way, in his own image, was so that man would have a choice of worshiping him. God created man in his own image, meaning that man is able to make a choice just like God is able to make a choice. We know that God created a donkey, He created the horse, He created the goose. And they all are programmed to operate exactly like they operated since the beginning of time. But man has a will and a choice. And God will allow a human being to make choices for himself. He will not impose his will on a man because God wants man to make his own choice but he also wants man to make a choice for God and this is the reason why God created us so that we make the choice to serve him I want to give you a few examples out of the Word of God the difference between the choices that people made on earth because the choice that you make will determine how you will live on earth the end results of your life where you will spend eternity let's turn to Adam and Eve the choice they made to reject God's law and accept Satan's uh, way of doing things. They ate of the fruit of the garden and were condemned and were sent out of the garden of Eden. And from then on, mankind had to work by the sweat of his brow to earn his living. Abraham and Lot. Abraham made a decision for God to serve him and to go in the way that God wanted him to do. Whereas, and in the end, God promised him 
that he would inherit the land of Israel and we see today that the offspring of Abraham the Israelites which came from Isaac still inherit the land of Israel let's look at Lot he chose to be in Sodom and Gomorrah meaning he chose to, to cast his lot in with the rich people who were making a lot of money in those days which was Sodom and Gomorrah and he lost everything his wife even to the point where his daughters committed terrible sin with him let's turn to David and Saul David when he fell into sin the prophet no, the prophet Nathan came to him and explained to him what happened and what did David do he repented of that sin and he fell on his face and asked God for forgiveness and God said to him he is a man after my own heart and he will rule his, his, his seed will rule Israel forever and how about Saul when he committed a sin, the prophet Samuel came to him and told him where he had made the mistake. But Saul wasn't interested in serving and pleasing God. He said to Samuel, you will come with me and make an offering so that the people will not turn against me, so that the people will respect me. So the difference between David and Saul was David wanted the honor of God, whereas Saul wanted the honor of people. It is an incredible thing that a person has and that is to make choices and every person has to make choices upon the face of the earth while he is living here and we have better be careful of the choices that we make let's look at Solomon the wisest man on earth the Bible teaches in Ecclesiastics that he spend his life seeking out wisdom and living for the flesh in the end he came to the conclusion and said all is vanity he lived for the, uh, the gratification of his flesh but had to in the end say that everything that he did on this earth was vanity and there was no profit in it but even Solomon in the end in the final end he said the, the the conclusion of all these is to serve God and honor him for God is going to judge the good and the evil but now let us turn to the pot to the Apostle Paul yes let, let's look at the Apostle Paul the difference between Paul and Solomon is incredible even though Solomon the wise preacher of Jerusalem was the wisest man on earth his choice in this life brought him to the point where in the end he said all his vanity and even after he died his kingdom was divided one was given to this and one uh, this person and the other part was given to that so there was a uh, two-part kingdom in the land of Israel after the reign of Solomon but the Apostle Paul made a wise choice I want to read to you out of Philippians chapter 3 verse 4 it says though I might also have confidence in the flesh he said I could have confidence in the flesh if I wanted to if any other man thinks that he has whereof he might trust in the flesh I can do that more I was circumcised on the eighth day I was of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrews of the Hebrews as touching the law of Pharisee concerning zeal persecuting the church touching the righteousness which is the law blameless but these things were gained to me these I counted loss for Christ it says but what things were gained to me these things I counted loss for Christ yea doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord for whom I have for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but 
dung that I may win Christ. So the Apostle Paul looked at his life and he said, I could have prestige. I could be thought, uh, uh, people would think a lot of me if I would continue in the way where I was brought up. But I count these things all dung that I might win Christ. And let, now let's look at the conclusion of Paul's testimony found in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. It says here, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love him his appearing. A far cry from the testimony of Solomon. Solomon said, vanity of vanities, whereas the Apostle Paul said, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, meaning that his life had been complete and fulfilled. He worked for the Lord Jesus Christ. He worked for God. His heart here on earth was to please God, and he made the decision. So the question is, what kind of a decision will we make? Because God has given us the ability to make those decisions while we are here on earth. We as Christians are here in Christ's stead. John 14, 12 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that's the Lord Jesus Christ speaking, He that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. We have a choice to make here on earth, to do the work of the Lord Jesus Christ, or to be like Solomon, live for the flesh. The Bible teaches in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, other foundation can no man lay, lay except that which is laid, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now it is up to us to build upon that foundation. Will we be like Solomon and build with wood, hay, or stubble? Or will we be like the Apostle Paul and build with gold, diamonds and precious stones. The choice is us. God has given us that choice and the end result of our lives will be laid out in front of us. The Bible teaches whatsoever a man sows that shall he also reap. So we as Christians have a great responsibility. The Lord Jesus Christ told us we are here in his stead to do his work. So let's turn to him, make that decision, and work for him so that we at the end of our lives can say like Paul, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me instead of like King Solomon. My life was vain and empty. Even though I have the Lord Jesus Christ, I did not do anything for him. And it seems to be so empty. So turn to the Lord. Make that decision. Seek his face and ask him what to do with your life. And to the unbeliever, I want to explain to you. You have a choice to make a decision for eternal life. The choice is yours. God prepared a sacrifice for you that attained eternal life for you. And you have to make that choice to turn to that precious sacrifice. You have to make a choice either for Jesus or against Jesus. And if you make that choice for Jesus, you will spend eternal life with him in heaven. But if you make a choice against Jesus, you will be separated from him eternally. And you will have to spend eter your eternal life in the lake of fire 
which the Lord God has prepared for the devil and his angels. So what is your choice today? It is up to you whether you're Christian or an unbeliever. God has left us with this incredible responsibility and that is to make a decision and a choice for Him. Thank you for listening. The Lord richly bless you. Amen. Yes, God did give us a great responsibility when He created us with the ability to make choices. But when we look out over the world today, we see the awesome, incredible destruction the choices of men have created. We can see that this whole world is coming to a place where the Lord Jesus Christ will have to come back and remake this planet which he has promised in his word. Let's look at the few things that are happening in the world today. For instance, the Bible teaches because of their choices they make, he will give them over to a reprobate mind. That is found in Romans chapter 1, 28. When we watch the news, we notice that Pakistan and India are getting ready for a nuclear war because of their religious differences. They have decided they are going to go to war and if God does not intervene there, if God has given them over to that reprobate mind, they will fight and that war will begin because some of their leaders have already said we are willing to lose 25 million people if we have to so that people will see that we mean business by what we believe in and this is God giving them over to a reprobate mind that they are willing to sacrifice millions of people to bring their point across. How awful the degeneration of a human being's mind if he decides to go against God. Let's look at the Middle East. There is terrible bloodshed there. A prime minister of uh, of Israel has said years ago, if the Arabs will learn to love their children more than they hate the Jew, then there will be peace in Israel. Look at the terrible things that are happening. And that saying seems to be true. For how often when we watch the news do we see those old Arab grandmothers declaring to the world that they are willing to sacrifice their grandchildren just so long as they can eliminate the children of Israel from the land of Judea. God has given them over to a reprobate mind. That means they have a godless mind. They think the thoughts of Satan. Let's look at what's happening in the West today. The terrible plague of homosexuality and the killing of millions of babies. God has given them over to a reprobate mind. It says in Romans chapter 1 verse 26, For this cause God gave them over unto vile affection. For even their women did change the natural use into which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burning their lust one towards an another, man with men, working that which is unseemly. So he is saying here, they are reaping what they are sowing. God has given them over to a reprobate mind because in their heart they are unrighteous and seek only after for the pleasure and gratification of the flesh. And if God does not come back soon, this world 
will turn into one holocaust because in the Old Testament before the children of Israel went into the land of Canaan to, to wipe out the inhabitants there the Bible teaches that the sin of the people their decision for turning against God made the land to vomit them out and this is exactly what will happen in this generation the land will vomit out the godless inhabitants that inhabit this earth God is about to come back and he will make a short work but the choice that we make for him is up to us will we be with him when he comes back or will we be with Satan? The awesome, incredible responsibility is ours because God has given us the choice to make. He will not make it for you. You have to make it for yourself. Until next time, the Lord richly bless you. Open your eyes to that truth and bring you to himself.